Hi, it's Molly Matthews. I hope you enjoy book one in my new romantic comedy series, which is out now. Lose yourself in this feel-great romance with all-important happily ever after. It's set in New York in December 2005, before the world went mad. Christmas for One will ease your worries and have you laughing out loud as 44-year-old Ruby Evans navigates the perilous task of dating again in the search for lasting love after being dumped. I hope you enjoy this free sample of Chapter One. You may like to go to my website mollymatthews.com Christmas for One and you'll find all the purchase links for all good online retailers. Readers often ask me, where do you get your inspiration from? How do you come up with the characters? I thought you'd love this fun fact. This adorable rescue dog, Snouts, is featured in my new Christmas rom-com. In my 30s, I was lucky to have crossed paths with a New Yorker who was visiting my hometown, Wellington, New Zealand. He invited me to come and stay in his three-storied brownstone with his girlfriend, who was a Broadway dancer. And while they were at work, I walked snouts in Central Park. Win, win. Another fun fact, you may enjoy my book Twist of Fate, which is inspired by both these people that I met in New York. Let's get into the story Christmas for One. Chapter One. New York, December 2005. People start over all the time. Why can't I? My friend Chanel's a life coach here in New York. She's one of the best. She even has her own column in The New Yorker. Chanel has generously offered to help me, to be honest. I really think I'm beyond help. Eleven months ago, my husband John left me for a younger woman, and now they're having a baby. A baby! My life is a walking cliché. I'm still feeling lost, betrayed, and empty. And when Chanel turns up at my place unexpectedly, she tells me she thinks I have abandonment issues. No kidding. It's 3 p.m. on Sunday, and I'm still in my pajamas, sprawled out on the sofa, devouring romance novels. What on earth are you reading, Ruby? She says, screwing up her nose. She picks up several paperbacks from the stack beside the sofa. The Virgin Bride? As if. Husband for hire? Why bother? Why on earth are you feeding your head with this stuff? Princess Diana read Barbara Cartland novels, and she married a prince, I say, crossing my arms defensively. Yes, and how did that work out for her? Chanel asks. With my left foot, I carefully slip Joan Luss's recent novella, Cuddle Up with the Prince, under the sofa. Besides, they're not mine, I lie. They're Millie's. I figured seeing as I'm not getting any romance, I may as well read about people who are. These aren't your daughters, Chanel says, tossing the books back on the sofa. J.K. Rowling is more her bag. You'd be better off reading books about wizards and magic than you would this stuff. People who can date and people who can't write about it, she says dismissively. Reading these, these Fairy tales is not going to help. I want to tell her that reading love stories helps hugely, that reading romance makes me feel less lonely, that reading romance lets me escape, that reading romance gives me hope, but I don't bother. The truth is, you fear abandonment, and this explains your reluctance to start dating again, Chanel continues. Think, Meghan Markle. I stare at her blankly. What would her life be like if she clung on to her deadbeat ex? Crap, I say. Exactly. It's time you went looking for a new husband, Chanel says when I confess I haven't been out for months. Well, that's not strictly true, of course. Every weekday I go to my job in a towering office on Fifth Avenue where I work as a trainee public relations advisor for the Miss American pageant. Believe me, there's a lot of work to do as we work to rebrand the organisation. But I love that finally women are being appraised on more than big boobs and hairspray. And after the mass exodus of lewd members of the leadership team, finally women are running the show. I have other non-paid jobs too, like walking my dog Snouts in Central Park and running Millie, my 15-year-old daughter, around. 
I don't have time, I lie. Besides, I'm quite happy sitting here at home. Honestly, I protest, picking the anchovies off last night's pizza. Nonsense, Chanel snaps as she brushes the dog hair from her expensive skirt. Every woman needs a man, especially you, Ruby. I mumble through a mouthful of cold pizza, but I'm enjoying my spare time reading books, doing what I want, not having to race to get my makeup on before my husband got up and saw the real me. You don't care what I look like, though, do you, snouts? I say, reaching down and patting the Dalmatian cross I rescued from death row. Snouts looks up at me adoringly. I'm lying, of course. The truth is I'm miserable. I miss my husband. I shouldn't after what he did, but I do. I miss being married. I miss having someone make decisions with me and dealing with things I don't want to, like taking the rubbish out and doing our accounts. Actually, I miss sex the most. We had great sex, even after 18 years and 13 days. What if I never have sex again? That's my biggest fear. I don't know how I would even begin to meet a man, let alone have sex with a stranger. I hope you enjoyed this excerpt from Christmas for One. As one reviewer wrote, this is a one-of-a-kind, full range of emotion book that if you have ever gone through a divorce and had a wonderfully supportive but definitely zany friend to get you through it all, you will relate to much of what Ruby experiences. There were times I laughed, times I cried, and other times I was cheerleader number one for Ruby to get her mojo on and take back her life. I absolutely love the story. I love the storyline, the characters, and I love the humour. I couldn't put it down. Are you inspired to read this fun and frisky Christmas romance? You'll find all the links on my website and in the comments below.